You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a professional motivational speaker, Nancy can assist you to blow through your setbacks and start living full out. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Once again, here's Nancy. Hello, I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're going to be talking about how love gives you the strength to survive. Now, when I say survive, it could be an actual accident, a tragedy in your life. But aren't we kind of all surviving life a bit, whether it's the highs and lows of financial woes, whether it's heartbreaks, whether it's just kind of the uncertainties of the world, right? We just don't know, and we're just doing our best every day. But a lot of times it is the love, the love unconditionally for others within ourselves. That is really the secret sauce that can give you that strength to get through the really hard days. It just looks different for everybody within the situation they're facing. So we're going to be joined shortly also by our inspirational guest, Donna Hartley, who will be sharing with us about, gosh, surviving a plane crash and cancer and, gosh, a heart condition. I mean, She is really the definition of survivor. She's right there with her name next to it. And we want to make sure that you do, you know, listen to today's show again, that if you need us when you're at the gym or in the car, that you go to the app store, look for the Living Full Out show. We always want to make sure that you are supported. We're on that journey with you. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a listener on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out show. Hi there. Hi, how can I help you? Well, I have a career decision. I've been, it's a debate that I debate every four years. I used to work in real estate. I have a real estate license. It's actually more challenging to get than people think. And then on top of that, I'm legally blind. So um, every four years, you have to renew your license. And I know if I don't renew it, I'm never going to be able to get it again. Um, I don't work in real estate right now, but I feel like having my license, keeping it up, it still leaves the door open, even if I don't actually work as a real estate agent, that I can still, um, like if I buy a property, get a referral commission from the other agent, or maybe still make money in certain ways from agents as they would compensate another agent. And if I don't keep this up, but I'm ever in a position where I need to shift career-wise to like that kind of angle of the business, that I still have the opportunity to do, to do so. But I just have to say in the past um, four, eight, 12 years, uh, it's just hard um, because you have to take tests. You either have to read the information, which I can't read, or have somebody help me or actually go to a physical class that ends up being out of state and it costs money, it takes a lot of time, and it's just pretty grueling. And I haven't used, I haven't benefited from having the real estate license in over a decade. Like I just haven't been in a position that I would benefit from it. But again, I'm not sure if I should keep doing this and keeping that door open or at this point not um, because it's not easy and it's not fun. But, you know, there's a pro and con to both directions. So I'm not sure what to do at this point. It's a really good question. It's um, it's one that, unfortunately, you're going to have to do that ever so sexy pros and cons list and try not to make them even. And also, it's one of those things where you're going to have to maybe ask and inquire to those that may be in your current work or jobs that you might go to. It's just going to take some due diligence because um, depending on what you do for a living now, depending on how secure you feel that job is, if that job were to disappear, what would you go to next? And if there's a plet- if there's a plethora of options that you could go to and that license would not be needed, then then that then that would probably tell you that maybe the license keeping that is maybe not the best investment of your time because it's not your plan B, it may not even be your plan C. But if beyond your current job, there are not a lot of plan B's and C's, then you might want to look at, okay, what if I kept that license and plan A, my current job 
should not continue, what would that license benefit me? What could I do for another company having it? You know, what would that look like? And I personally, I am a planner, I can't help myself, but I think it is important to have a plan A, a plan B, and when you can, a plan C. So if this license is something that would support a plan B, then it's worth keeping. Mm -hmm. If the license is no way remotely even something that you would do as a plan B or a plan C, then it's worth letting it go. Um, Unfortunately, only you're going to know that, but I think the question is a really good one. The other thing you might want to consider is the the cost of keeping it. It sounds like there's a variety of options that you have. Uh, it sounds like one of them was a live a live class or something, and then maybe some other ones are like at home study type of thing. You know, you might look at worst case scenario costs. Just inflate the costs. Worst case scenario of what it would do to pay for the live event versus the home study course, and maybe if you need it to pay a tutor hourly, what that would look like. And I would look at those worst case scenarios of the cost, because those are what it would require to keep it. And again, factor that in that plan B and plan C. Because again, if your plan B and plan C have nothing to do with this license, then it's worth letting go. But if you don't keep the current job, and this license could help you define a plan B or be an asset in a plan B, then you want to look at that as just a write-off, something that Mm -hmm. you write off, whether it's yearly or every two years or every four years. And And if it's yearly or two years or four years, then you take that cost and you break it down for 12 months or 24 months. And then you're really looking at the cost of keeping this. So Mm -hmm. if it's going to cost you five bucks a month over the sake of two years, four years, whatever, might be worth keeping it. And that's giving you all the bells and whistles of support you may need to keep it. But do you see how it's just going to take a little bit of uh, that pros and cons list, but also worst case scenario list, uh, you know, and then what would that plan be? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, unfortunately, I think it is plan B and plan C. And money is certainly a factor, but it's also just hard. You know, it's it's hard. Okay, um, if it, if it's plan do and Yeah, if it's mm-hmm. plan B and plan C and it is an asset to those plans because we are in a really shifty world, then it may be worth keeping. And then you go to that inflated number What's the worst case scenario of the cost to keep it? Overinflate it. Add an extra five hundred dollars to it for the for the what if plan, and then you got to look at how often you have to renew it. Divide it by how many years, and that is your monthly cost to keep it. And you might look at that monthly cost and say, you know what, for ten bucks a month, I'm just going to keep it. You might look at it and say, you know what, for twenty five bucks a month. I'm not going to keep it. Well, I but wish it really... wasn't just the money. I feel like it's the hassle of having to do it well, and how hard physically it is to do it. You know? Well, so when you overinflate, when you overinflate your number, whatever that cost is to doing the training or doing the class or a study course, factor in time because the time it's going to take for you to attend an in-person course or the time it's going to take you away from your current job to do the study from home course, factor in the amount of money you'd also be losing for the two weeks, one week, one day, it might take you to get it. It's really going to be, it's actually, when you break it down to just the black and white of the numbers, I think it'll become more clear. You really just have to find a way to take the emotion out of it. Because if we were to add emotion to everything, then we would never go on diets. We would never lose weight. We would never go on dating apps. We would never do so many things because of the emotional attachment to how hard it is. 
So if you take away the emotional attachment, make it more about just the numbers, I think that will give you clarity. I think. Does that help? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we wish... <laughs> not exciting, not sexy, not exciting, but you have direction and you have a plan. So that's what you right. want to run with. But thank you so much for calling in today. We wish you all the best and uh, sending all people who need real estate your way. Um, and <laughs> for everybody listening, we are going to be coming right back. Love comes in so many forms, but it really is the superpower strength that allows us to survive these tricky, twisty, turny times in life. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Donna Hartley sharing her inspirational story. I'm Nancy Soleri. This is The Living Full Out Show. We'll be back. Life looks a little different. During these times, we're doing our best to keep our minds and bodies strong. And getting a flu shot helps us stay healthy, so we don't miss out on what matters. Like having game night at home. <coughs> yeah, can't do that while sick with the flu. Now imagine family movie night that your daughter can't live without. <sighs> Well, that's ruined. And don't forget your uncle's socially distanced cookout. <coughs> See, that's why it's important to be at our strongest. Every year, millions of people in the U.S. get the flu. Especially now, no one has time to miss out on moments that matter. So get your flu shot. Find out more at getmyflushot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. Don't you wish your life came with a warning app? Stop. That dog does not want to be petted. <laughs> Just a little heads up before something bad happens. Move your coffee cup away from your computer. Oh, no, 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 no. So you can have more control. Stop. You're texting your boss by mistake. Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes like managing your weight, getting active, stopping smoking, and eating healthier, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. It's easy to learn your risk. Take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Warning, the cap is loose on that catch-up. Ugh. Don't wait. You have the power to change the outcome. Visit doihaveprediabetes.org today. That's doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Mm. Watch out! <laughs> you got me! The galaxy is safe once again. <laughs> In the pretend universe, kids play with pretend guns. In the real world, it's up to us to make sure they don't get their hands on a real gun. If you have a gun in the house, keep it locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A Teenager. Learning the Lingo. Today, I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous, as in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, 
Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about how love gives you the strength to survive. And have we brought you a survivor today? Uh, I consider her actually a good friend now over the years here, Donna Hartley. But she really defines surviving. Um, But she does it honestly with heart. She's a huge walking heart. If you see a heart walk in the streets, that's Donna. So I would like to welcome Donna to the show. Thank you. It's my honor to be on the show today. Oh, man, you are just a powerhouse. Every time I chat with you, I always just feel like I need to go take a run after. I have so much energy from you. You're you're just really a special person. And that is really what makes the fact that you have survived so many life events you know, so, so important to share. I, I want to take our audience back a bit, though. I myself grew up with uh, domestic violence. And I also know and can appreciate how alcohol can alter someone's mood and behaviors. And you grew up with that in your family when you were younger. And I'm just wondering, how did you survive that? You know, little Donna, because again, you are such a loving person at heart, but I know that's just such a chaotic environment to be in. Well, if you don't get the love at home, then I excelled in school. I'm not saying with grades, but with sports, with friends. I also was very lucky to be a snow skier. So I put a lot of time and energy into that. I took up tennis. You know, I became, yes, I became a cheerleader. So at least I got my kudos and felt that I had some worth there. Uh, And then when I went home to do it, you know, and the violence came up, it would take me down. There's no question about it. There's no question. But then when I go back and do those sports or do something that I was good in, and then I would remember that I'm an okay person. So you became probably really good at carpamentalizing your life. Correct. Yeah. And, And obviously... Skiing has been a passion. You were, you know, athletically amazing at it. Um, But you also had many other talents. I know you went on, you were Miss Hawaii, you dabbled in acting, and you, you know, had so many different activities that you were pursuing. But there was a stretch of time, a long seven-year stretch of time, where you felt like you were just going in circles, where you couldn't pay the rent, where it just got more devastating by the day. And there was a day that you were going to fly to Hawaii, and you got on the plane and it seemed like kind of a normal flight, but you were, your gut told you differently. What did you, what were you thinking about that flight? Well, I was at an all-time low in my life in Hollywood. No boyfriend, no money, as you said, but going to Hawaii That was always a good place for me. And I thought, my life will change today. It will absolutely change today. But I couldn't board that flight. I was the last person to get on. My stomach was churning. Something was off. You know, suicide was definitely on my mind, you know. Got on that flight, 167 miles per hour, just on liftoff. It exploded on takeoff and burnt to the ground. That's when I had that near-death experience. I was either going to die or my life was going to change forever at that moment. And for all of us who have been at LAX in Los Angeles, you know, on such a flight, I mean, that is, I mean, I, 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 I don't know how many people were actually watching the flight attendant when they were doing their run through before they took off, but that is when you need that knowledge most. How, how did you, you obviously survived, but how did you survive that? Well, I did count the rows when the flight attendant was talking. I had six rows to the exit. I had changed my seat. I demanded it be changed to an aisle seat. 
you know, and I usually have a window. That was another advantage. I was in the aisle. I was six rows from the exit. I had turned around when they were talking and just looked where the exit was. So when that happened, you know, you grip your ankles, your head's down. We crashed. We exploded. We were on fire. They screamed, come to the rear, come to the rear. And people just packed the aisle. I mean, it was so tight. I can't even tell you. I fell to the wrong side of the plane because we're jacked up 20 feet. The side that I had to jump up was up in the air. And I scrambled back on all fours. There was an opening. My stomach scraped along the metal in the back. I want, didn't think my one leg was going to come with me because it was caught behind me. But it did. And as I'm going down, the chute is starting to burn. So I'm the last one to make it down. My one leg hit. Pop, pop, pop. I could feel the vertebrae in my back go. But I was able to get up and limp away from the burning aircraft. Well... And the thing that is most interesting as your story journeys along, what was the date of that? The date crash? was March 1st, 1978. And that March date, first, has stayed with me for a long time. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking, I'm hoping one day there's like a lottery on March 1st, and you should definitely buy a ticket. But that is your <laughs> Thank date. Thank you. I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, you know, you did survive that. You... You you were rattled, obviously, but did it did it significantly change your outlook? Did it pull out that survivor in you to ante up in life again? It pulled it out it, to change everything about my life. Everything changed that moment. I realized every life is important on this planet, mine and everyone else's. So do not spend time thinking that you are a mistake or you are not worthy. At that moment, I had been realized I'd given a body, I've given an opportunity, I've given a soul. And from that day forward, I said, any day I have, a day that it's raining, a day I don't have money, I have one more day to make it right. Because mm. when I came down that evacuation slide and ran away and looked at people burning to death, I was still alive. So I've never taken my life for granted that day. And when something happens to me, I don't say it's good or it's bad anymore. It's just a life lesson that I have to tackle. Well, and it's interesting, Donna, because there's a lot of people that, you know, put shoulds and coulds and you should be, you should check that box. And, you know, you were just doing the best you could. But one one box that you wanted to check for yourself was being a mother. And you were in your 40s and, you know, everybody was like, don't do it. You can't do it. You're not going to be able to afford it. You don't have the time for it. But the tenacious you, 11 do adoptions in, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> finally got Mariah. Now, right. what is that moment like, 11 adoptions in, when you finally get the yes? Well, everybody was right. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, you know, raise a daughter as a single mom. But I wanted a family. I also wanted to heal myself before I adopted. That's why I waited till my 40s. I didn't want to pass on those patterns to my daughter. So, oh, see, I, I, lo see, I love you. that. I love that because, again, you needed to purge the toxic, purge wasn't what wasn't working before you added her to your life. And I think that's very wise. I want everyone to really kind of soak that in. Um, Donna, I want you to stay with us because the fact that you adopted Mariah really kind of took your your love, your survivorship, even up another notch. So everybody, today we are talking about, you know, how love does give you the strength to survive. And Donna Hartley is a perfect example of that. We'll be right back after this break. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, in math, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. Trash. And in gym, in biology, I learned that I'm pathetic that I'm fat, and a joke. And in history, in I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. 
The only thing I didn't learn in school today. The only thing I didn't learn today. The only thing I didn't learn is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. I'm Nancy Soleri, Certified Life and Business Coach. I want to invite you to the Personal Development Boot Camp. During the boot camp, we're going to be looking at taking those insecurities that you have and getting rid of them. We're also going to look at ways in which you can thrive and live a life full of purpose. Go to livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp, livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp to sign up. I believe in you and here's to you living your life full out. They'll challenge your authority. They'll try to break your will. They'll push you to the edge of your sanity. Because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, not theirs. Defend it. Who makes the payments? Who cleans it? Who drives it? You do. That's who. And in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch until you hear that click. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. Seven million children suffer from asthma, more than any other chronic disease. Most asthma attacks are caused by allergic reactions to allergens, including those left behind by cockroaches and mice. In fact, 82% of U.S. households contain mouse allergens, and cockroaches are found in up to 98% of urban homes. How can you protect your family? Find out at PestWorld.org. A message from the National Pest Management Association and the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. It, slip it, cuff it, check it. Talk to doctor now and share it. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it twice a day. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it in the morning and before dinner. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it, and share it with my doctor. Nearly one in two U.S. adults have high blood pressure. That's why it's important to self-monitor your blood pressure in four easy-to-remember steps. It starts with a monitor. Now that I know my blood pressure numbers, I talked with my doctor. We're getting those numbers down. Get it, slip it, cuff it, check it. Talk to doctor now and share it. Be next to talk to your doctor about your blood pressure numbers. Get down with your blood pressure. Self-monitoring is power. Learn more at manageyourbp.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the American Heart Association, and the American Medical Association. In partnership with the Office of Minority Health and Health Resources and Services Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about how love can give you the strength to survive. And we're going to be continuing our interview here with Donna Hartley, for whom has survived so many really extraordinary life events. But yet she got closer and closer to her purpose, you know, achieving dreams, you know, here and there along the way, which really is playing life full out. So I'd like to welcome Donna back to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> now, Donna, we talked about in the last segment the importance of March 1st in your life. And we also talked about, you know, just the vigor and the planning that you put into adopting your daughter, Mariah, 11 adop adoptions in. But for the most part, you were doing it. You were m mommy. You were... You had planned, you had got your life to a stable place, and then life had another, you know, scoop in store for you. What happened on the next March 1st, several years later, but what was the next hurdle that you faced? 
Okay, my daughter is six years old at this time, little Mariah. We're having a great time together. It was difficult, but so much love between us. I was diagnosed with stage three melanoma. I had been a surfer in Hawaii when I went to college there, and they said, make out your will. There is a good chance that you will not make it through this. Now, when I sat down to make out the will, there was really no one that my daughter could live with. And we went up to the top of the mountain, Squaw Valley, Lake Tahoe. We went ice skating. My little daughter's there. And uh, she said, Mommy, Mommy, I wish I had the boo-boo on my leg. Then you'd be healthy. And I said, stay here. I'm just, I'm just going to make a loop around. Beautiful day. I looked up at those clouds. I looked up at the sky and said, this is the deal. Are you listening? I am the only one to raise my daughter. Let me raise my daughter. It is not about you. I mean, it's not about me, it's about her. Please let me raise her. And then, of course, I said, and I promise I won't complain about the teenage years, but that's a whole other story right there. Okay, so three days later, they called me. I went in, they did surgery, three procedures, and I was stage three. They found no cancer left in my body anywhere. Well, that is a miracle. That is a miracle, and you were a force to be reckoned with <laughs> when you had that that chat on that ice skating rink. Um, but but you know the thing is, again today, as much as you loved your daughter, and you do love her, but as much as you had that love, as much as you fought for life, you know, I'll never understand why good you know bad things happen to good people, other than the fact that we're meant to go through these tests. And once again, you were tested years later on March 1st. Again, what happened then? I had open heart surgery. And my daughter was just then in fifth grade. And they had to crack me open. It was a valve that I had been born with that wasn't correct. They had found it when I was 16. But here I was in my 50s. And they had to put a new valve in. I was going to be down for a couple months. You know, the whole thing, raising my daughter. Luckily, I live in a community where everyone helped me. But again, I had to have that determination to live and to recover. And I have to tell you, when I woke up in ICU and everything hurt in my body and I could, you know, hardly stand, you know, after a week they got me up and and I had to eat a little bit of oatmeal and the whole thing. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I mean, I could just shuffle my foot about two inches. I had to start all over, learn how to talk, walk, everything. But I had a daughter to raise, and I loved her. You know, when it comes, if I, it's so interesting. I would bet on you in Vegas all day long. Like, like <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I want it all on red. I want it all <laughs> on Donna. But, but the truth is, you know, we're talking today about, you know, how love gives us the strength to survive. And you loved your daughter. That is what gave you purpose to get through some of these really twisty, turny times in in your life. But, you know, at the same time, if you're really looking back at what you, Donna, can't control, like you can't control the love you get back, the love you get back from your daughter as she's older today, or the support you were hoping one to get back from your family over time when when they weren't there. And so sometimes the love is kind of tricky because, you know, we can give it and and spoon it out and and expect that it's going to come back to us, but we might just be waiting for nothing. And that this has actually been kind of a, a recent lesson for you. What have you learned about giving love away with no expectations? Well, I personally think this is the hardest lesson that any person can learn on this planet. And if you can do this, then you have really raised your energetic vibration and your soul and your compassion. So let me start with alcoholic parents and violence. I didn't get the love I wanted. So I learned to forgive them and give them unconditional love without expecting anything. Then I went with a lot of men. I never married, ups and downs. Some of them took my money, you know. I was successful and all those ups and downs. And I've forgiven every one of those. I've spent a lot of time going back, forgiving, releasing. So then there comes my daughter. I now know there's unconditional love. I love her. I do expect that back. But no, she chooses a man that is not healthy for her, that there's a wedge between us. 
And when I found she was engaged, it was on Facebook. I didn't think I could cry as much as I did, but I did for about two months. And then I was able to release her and love her and want the best for her, but know that there might not be a lot of time with us. But I think that might change now. I think she's opening up her eyes to, you know, what it, real motherhood is, what real friendship is, what real honesty is, you know? Well, because you have become a bit of an expert on surviving, is surviving matters of the heart harder than surviving a plane crash? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll take as hard as the plane crash was, and I'm telling you, it was absolutely traumatic and heart surgery because I even had another heart surgery after that open heart one during the pandemic. They are tremendous because it's life or death. But I'll tell you, the heart is harder for any human being than going through those surgeries. Hmm. And, and what do you what 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 did you have to tell yourself, you know, to pick yourself up? In all these times, because an injury, there's dark, there's darkness, despair, suicidal thoughts. You know, my daughter's, you know, this, this wedge between us. What if she never loves me again? What if I never hear from her again? You know, there's that, you know, darkness, pity party, woes me. How, what got you out of those dark places? Well, first of all, I have to cry it out. Second of all, I have to forgive myself. I have to forgive myself if I made any mistakes, if I said the wrong thing. Nobody is perfect. So I had to forgive myself and then remember to love myself for who I was with all my accomplishments and all my failure. So that's a big part of it, accepting yourself. Then I have to realize that everybody on this planet is on their path. They have things to learn. They have things to do. It might not align with my path, but they have it. So I have to release them, wish them always the best, love them unconditionally, and let them go. Okay? And then I have some great girlfriends that I can call, that I can laugh, that I can put it back. But the first thing, I have to spend time alone Mm -hmm. sorting it out. So that's my survival strategy. And, you know... Do you still re- believe in romantic love? Are you still holding oh. the space for that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. And he is coming in. I'm making room because I'm not raising my daughter now. I'm open to possibilities. Absolutely. At any time in our life when it arrives, and I wish it would arrive this year. There you go. Well, and if he has a brother, you know, give him my number and we'll go on a double date, you know. Um, well, you I mean, the, the thing is, surviving is kind of one of those things, you, you know, you, you have this um, instinct quality, you have this vigor, this fire. Some people have it, some people don't. And in like literally 20 seconds for the person who doesn't have it, what would you say? I'd say they first have to do work on themselves. They have to go in, find out who they are, what they like, because if they love themselves and accept themselves with all their flaws and all the love they have to give, there could be a friendship out there. I'm not saying an ultimate love, but a friendship. They can volunteer. They can give love. They can work uh, at a, a, a for pets. Do something where you give love. That's how love comes back to you. Mm, got it. And, and, and honestly, surviving, again, you're, I consider you an expert at it. And so if somebody says, I just don't have it, like Donna, I'm not you. What's, what's one thing, putting love aside, but what is the one thing they need to do to fight? I think they need to meditate. Again, I think they need to go in. I think they need to calm the soul instead of saying, I don't have it. They have to stop that vocabulary and meditate and start being grateful for the life they have. Once you get grateful, then you open the opportunities for other things to come. I agree. They might not have it at that moment, but everybody can learn and grow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and obviously, you know, you are, uh, you know, somebody who is positive, you know, you're a fighter, you're a dreamer. And you, like I said early on, you are a walking heart. I'm still waiting for you to like be walking along Huntington Beach. I'll be like, yep, yeah, there's the heart. There's Donna. Um, but I want to really thank you so much today, Donna, for sharing your story with us because, 
you know, it's hard to talk about matters of the heart. It's hard to talk about, you know, times that we had suicidal thoughts, you know, but you do it in such a beautiful way. Uh, What does living full out mean to you today? Well, first of all, don't you think it's amazing my last name is Hartley? Uh, Not by accident. Yeah. (laughs) So living... Living today, you know, I, I'm going to work till the end of time. I love what I do. I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. I love helping people. So I'm really going to do that. But I also have balance in my life. That's very important to me. So you're right. I snow ski. I do sports. I walk all the time. Even when I had my last heart surgery during the pandemic, I put my cat in the stroller and I walked 500 miles in my neighborhood for rehab. You know, we will. We will. You are one person who does not need an energy drink. If I, if you are the one person, Donna, thank you so much for being on today's show. Honestly, I adore you and uh, we'll keep an eye out on you and keep cheering you on. Thank you so much. It was my blessing to be on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And for everybody, we'll be coming right back today. It is all about, you know, letting the love be the strength to getting you through and surviving these difficult moments. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. We'll be back. (coughs) To some people, the sound of a baby babbling doesn't mean much. But that's not necessarily true. By six months, they're combining vowels and consonants. By nine months, they're trying out different kinds of sounds. And by 12 months, their babbling is beginning to take on some meaning. Especially if there's no babbling at all. Little to no babbling by 12 months or later is just one of the possible signs of autism in children. Early screening and intervention can make a lifetime of difference and unlock a world of possibilities. Take the first step at AutismSpeaks.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with a sun protection factor, or SPF, of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. UVA rays age the skin, UVB rays burn, and both cause cancer. But the perfect sunscreen doesn't count if you use it wrong. Don't need sunscreen on a cloudy day? Wrong. 80% of UV rays still get through the haze. Only use sunscreen at the beach? Nope. Anytime you're outside, UV rays attack the skin, so you need protection. And you have to reapply sunscreen every two hours. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I got to tell you, I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too, but I'm glad we are. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and life experiences come together through conversation, and it feels good. Wow, your story is so... uh, Interesting. Yeah. (laughs) When people actually sit down, talk, and listen to one another, they can break down boundaries and connect as human beings. At lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step, you can listen to amazing, life-changing conversations and find simple tools to start a conversation of your own. I know one thing. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together by having the courage to start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, No matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. 
you must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811 Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Always remember that love will give you the strength to survive those really hard times in your life. But you can't give up on love. Now, when I say that, I mean the love within yourself. Be your best friend. Be that person that's the most creative and resourceful and, you know, encourages yourself to keep stepping forward. All your friends, your family, your coworkers, they'll be right down the sidelines cheering you on. But it does start with you as you live full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a professional motivational speaker, Nancy can assist you to blow through your setbacks and start living full out. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Once again, here's Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And we've been talking about how love gives you the strength to really survive the different obstacles, challenges, whatever you want to call them in life, right? Hardships. But the thing is, is truly, it is love. I remember back when Whitney Houston came on the scene and she belt out greatest love of all. And if you really go and you listen to those words, the greatest love of all is the love within yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you got to go out there with a big ego and be self-absorbed, narcissistic. It's not about that. But it is about being good to yourself. It is about finding balance. And it's the times that we hit the brick wall of life. We hit our low moment. We have the pity party. We, we get an unexpected injury. Those are like whispers. Those are like really important crossroad times where you have to reflect, where you have to maybe slow down, let go of relationships that are toxic, really reassess. And when I tell you all of that, I, I'm, I'm with you, right? I, I, get, I get those changes. I get what it's like to do that. And one of the things I just want to share with you is, as I've navigated life, It's really been interesting to figure out, you know, what does love look like? Because let's just say romantic love. You can have a a soulmate, a love of your life, and they can pass away and you might find another one. They might pass away and and you kind of vow that they were the love of your life and, and you got it right the first time. Or there's those of us who are still looking for our Mr. and Mrs. Wright or, you know, ones that we can run with. And so there is no magic to pill to love and in, in what that looks like. And remember that others can't be the def- definition of love for you. I say that even when it comes to pets. Many of you in the Living Full Out community know that Lionel Richie, my Jack Russell Terrier, was really a part of the beginning of living full out. He lived for 13 years until he passed away. He had an enlarged heart of all things. But, you know, I rallied again and and obviously have now since adopted Charlie and Frost, my guide dog. But the thing is, it's important to, to love again, even fur baby love. And I know that sometimes is one of the hardest pains is watching a a dear pet pass away. Oftentimes people say, I can't ever go through that pain again. They're only going to live 10, 15, 20 years, maybe even five years. I, I, I can't even imagine that pain. But what I want you to look at is it, which is a bigger pain? Because the pain of not loving is a pain on its own, never feeling that you know, never knowing that versus the pain of having it and losing it. And, you know, like the saying says, you know, I, I'd rather lose it and, and, and not have it again than to never have had it at all. And 
you know, even when I think about in my life, which is kind of a personal journey, which was that infertility journey, had five miscarriages, you know, I'm I'm always grateful that I had that brief time where I got to experience what that was like. It didn't mean that I had to raise earth children <laughs> forever, but it was it was an interesting journey to feel that five times to to experience what that may have been like. But again, I can't have the sad, the scary without the pleasure, without the experience. So whatever it is for you in your life, whether, you know, it's relationships in your life, whether it's a career, maybe it's a business that you own or have started, uh, whatever that is, it is always going to be better to try. So when we talk today about how love gives you the strength to survive. Everything starts with love. If you love a person, you can weather a storm together maybe either stay together as romantic partners or be stay, become friends. When it comes to a, a a business, you have to really love that business. You know, it's so funny. I, I love living full out. And uh, it's, it, you know, I work hard, a lot of days, a lot of hours. But, you know, seeing all of you thrive and knowing that our team here is making a difference you know, the emails we get or the direct messages we get on social media, it means we're doing something right. We're in the good lane of, of helping others. And so sometimes when you have those hours, those demands, they don't really feel like responsibilities. They don't feel painful because they're purposeful. And so when you journey through your life today, this month, this year, You really want to identify and be grateful for the loves in your life, relationships, career, activities, but also it goes back to what I talked about. That greatest love of all is you. If you love yourself, if you love your body enough to get it checked out, go to the doctor, you know, work out, eat right. If you love your mind enough to fill it with healthy thoughts, good people, positivity, then you are going to be the big winner at the end. You will survive this game of life. So the entire family here, the Living Full Out community, we so appreciate you listening. And uh, we are right there beside you every step of the way. Make sure you go to the App Store. Look for the Living Full Out show if you want to hear us on the go. As always, I'm right there beside you every step of the way. Here's to all of you living full out. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Here's to you, Living Full Out.